it man namni amra bi damra basin isus min akhim you have it no no mem gimel amra alaf mem gimel amra alaf okay basin isus min akhim you know there's a tonight suba that a father when he leaves and he says that he if any daughters are not married they have a right to be supported from the estate and they take priority over the brothers although on a Torah level the brothers the sons are the heirs and a daughter doesn't inherit in the place of a son but there's a thing there's a Ketanic Suba that in the Ksubi writes that the, the daughters that I have should be supported from the estate and the brothers have to give and the, even there's not enough for both the brothers they have to go beg and the daughters they're supported from the estate so there was a question before if the daughter is receiving money from the estate Normally, if a girl is up to 12 and a half, she finds a lost item, right? It belongs to the father. She has earnings, wages. The wages go to the father. So I had a question before. What about now she's getting from the estate? Did the brothers, did they get her earnings? Did they, did they take what she should find? So Mark concluded, no. That's only for the father, not for the, not for the brothers. Okay? So this is what we're holding. Her wages go to herself. The brothers, although she's taking from their estate, because they are the heirs, doesn't make a difference. What's the reason? What's the reason why? The father, when he has a right to the wages, that's a Torah law, he has a right to the wages. So maybe they should inherit that right from the father. As the father had the right, they should have the right. Correct? So he says, the chsiv is nachaltem osam levenechem. If a person has, let's say, a Canaanite slave, and he dies, so the children, they inherit the slave. It's an asset. So what's osam? What's the inference of osam? They should be inherited to the sons. Achrechem osam levenechem v'lo b'nosechem levenechem. The rights that you have in the slave go to the sons, but the right the father has in the daughter does not go over. Therefore, we had earlier, we spoke about kenas. If the father had kenas, let's say it wasn't ruled yet in Bezdin, Right? And the father dies before Bezlin gave the ruling. Somebody raped the daughter. And then afterwards, the father dies before the Gemar Din, before they went to Bezlin. So who, who receives the Kanas? She receives the Kanas. But they, they take over the father's rights? No. The, the Kanas, the father does not pass on the rights of the daughter to the, to the, to the brothers. And it's, it's, it's all derived from this. It's not chaltum osun levnechem. O a achrechem, osun levnechem, v'lo b'nusechem levnechem. Right? Whatever rights a father has a daughter, he doesn't pass it on to what? To his sons. Maybe that's only speaking when dealing with what? With Kenas v'chavolos. Because what's chavolos? Somebody injures the girl. I, injury is what? That's pain. Right? So pain, that belongs to her. Kanas is also what? It's not something, it's not restitution. Omer Rav Yosef Rechanino, Shepotso Bifoneo. Shepotso Bifoneo, so Rashi is the Afrosom Mikas, but let's say he caused a facial injury. So if he caused a facial injury, what, what is that? She's worth less. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it's not just an injury we cause her pain. Even that, right? Because that has to do with selling your daughter. If you sell your daughter, she's worth less. She's less attractive. Omra of Zero, Omra of Master, Omra Rav, Amilo, Omra of Zero, Omra of Master, Omra Rav. It's either Rav Zero, name of Rav Masno, name of Rav. Others say it's Rav Zero. And then Omra Rebbe Masno, Omra Rav. Basen is Onus Menachin. Masi Odeo Laatzmo. Right? The wages, she receives her own wages. The, the brothers not receive. So what do we learn from this pasuk? The Canaanite slave is passed on to the sons, but not the sister. Who's Right? He says, who shkod? Shmuel, harav omra, em af shkod omra. Meaning, that that you're saying over the name of Rav, it's not only 
Rav says that Shmuel, who's the contemporary of, of Rav, also concurs. Omer Mar Bar Memo, the Ravashi Hochim, and Nerdo Hilsa Kavosi Rav Sheshes. Vashim Hilsa Kavosi the Rav. Nerdo, they said we rule like Rav Sheshes, that what? That, that the brothers get it. Ravash says, no, we rule like Rav, Hilsa Kavosi the Rav, that what? That the wages and the. She, even if she's getting from the estate, she gets the wage, she keeps the wages. It's interesting that Shmuel's called Shkod. Right? We're going to name a shkod. Sh the shkod means to be, to be diligent. You know, shkod. No, Rabbi, Shmuel is from Bavel. It's a Hebrew word, shkod. Hebrew, Hebrew. Shkido, shkido. Mean, means a uh, person who's, who's diligent. Effort. Yeah, so Rashi's boy was called Shkod. Now, we know that throughout Shas, whatever this Machluk, so Rav and Shmuel, we rule like Rav the Isur, the Isuri, and we, sh we rule like Shmuel Bedine. Dine means Dine Momenus. Monetary issues, we rule like Shmuel. Issues which are not monetary, always rule like Rav. He says, Have you called Shkod? I'll shum to Hilsa Kavosi Bedine. The Shokit al Dvor of the Omrum Kilso. It's interesting. But, and Isur not. It says, because he was very diligent and very delving into monetary I issues, that's what we, we real like, rule like Shmuel over Rav. Now that's what, we, that's what we understand with our Rashi, but Rashi is the reason why we really deal. And that's why that was his expertise. Like certain people have, you know, the Mercer is Nabur Zoro, here, uh, Norman, the Mercer is Nabur Zoro, Eino Adam Lome Elo Mashli Bochofitz. That each person has certain things that he's naturally attracted to. In, in learning, you learn from a certain type of Rebbe, a certain Mesechta, a certain subject matter. It's, for some reason, the pers person is drawn after it. Shmuel, his subject matter was monetary issues. So because they were, he invested a greater degree of effort in, in monetary mm -hmm. than in others. Therefore, that, and that's why we were like Shmuel. But it's interesting, it's interesting. So it seems to be Shmuel had the capacity... If he would have invested the same efforts into Dina Yisr, we drew like Shmuel by Yisr, right? Seemingly, because it says, what, it says the way Rashi is learning. Why? Why does he say he's called Shkod? Shoshokeid al Dvor of Lomrim Kilcha, and that's what he says. That's what we drew like Shmuel by Dina Momenus. It's a Chiddush. I mean, I mean, if Rashi would have said, I wouldn't say. Of course, it borders on something which is to say, you know. Even though a person is great as Shmuel, I mean, he wouldn't invest as much focus on, on Dina Yisr. Mm -hmm. You'd say that he had a greater expertise and that he had greater clarity. Okay, he had a greater clarity. But to say because he invested a greater amount of shkido in Dini Momon, in monetary issues, that's what rule like him, not the others. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's difficult to say. But Rashi says it. Eddie, you hear the difficulty? Okay. Yeah, but he said because he applied himself to a greater degree here than elsewhere. Yeah, that's that, yeah, that that's the question. Or maybe there were other people who were able to, and he was, and therefore, yeah, it could be. No, 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 no. Everybody, no, no. That, that was the yeshiva of of, of Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam's yeshiva. Each student was an expert in one Masechti. They knew everything. But each one's expertise was in one tractate. And Rabbi Nutan was the Roshiva. He was the expert in everything. And whenever he would need anybody, any, anything about any Masechta, he would summon that Talmud. And he was the expert in that, that particular. But he knew every, that Talmud knew everything also. But his expertise was, they could say, because he had a limited capacity. This Rishon, we're talking about this time at Amoroyim. Further, Hamaris is Bito, the Gisho. Right? Person who only did the first part of the marriage. Irsin, the Gisho. Irsa, Vinisarmlo. She became a widow. Either she was divorced or widowed. Ksubasa Shalom. Interesting, Shiloh. A daughter 
the, let's say between the age of 12 and 20, 12 and a half, the father marries her off, she gets divorced, or she gets, she's widowed. Who gets the ksuba? Is, is the ksuba like my seed daim? Right? Is it like earnings? Or like a lost find? Or is it belongs to her? So that, the Mishnah says, ksuba so shalom. Belongs to him. He see all the gear show. What about there was Nisuin? So once there's Nisuin, she's out of his domain totally. He see of the Salma, ksuba so shalom. It's poshut, right? Because just like until Nisuin, he could actually he could nullify her in the Dorim. Mm -hmm. How far in the Dorim is until she becomes a Bulgaris. So similarly here, until, even though she's a Nara, but fashion until there's Nisuin, she, she's still in his domain. Rabbi Yudome, Rishonu Shalav. Rishonu Shalav. Yeah. Imi she isua ein lo avi arushuspo. I didn't say what, what's the... No, 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 I understand that. Rabbi Yudome says, Rishonu Shalav. What's the Rishonu? And the second marriage, she's still in Nara. We're all still, she's still in Nara. No, 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 no. But it's an air sin. We're not talking about the suin. He see her, it's poshut. He see her, so that's the difficult. He see her, it's shalav. The first marriage of he see, even though she she left his domain. Time of he see of a gear show. He see of a nisarmano, avon nisarmano, shrei zimni. He's asking good question. It says she was either divorced, she was first divorced, then she was widowed. What about she would have been twice divorced or twice widowed? What do we have to give an example? She experienced two. Time of the sea of the Girsho, he see of Insamla, Abu Isamla, the Trey Zimni, Sula Chazul and Suve. But if you married off twice, right? Samba Trey Zim, Sula Chazul and Suve. What does that mean? Well, that because she's a Katlonis. Right? She's she, No, if she's a widow, that means two husbands died. I mean, she buried two husbands. <coughs> so that's what it says. She was divorced and, and widowed. One, because it, it, there's nothing follows if, after. One, after the second time, it's over. Why? So there's a machlokas, Rebbe and the Chachomim. What is Chazoka? Is Chazoka twice or is Chazoka three times? Mm -hmm. So we go, since it's Pikuach Nefesh, by marriage, we're Machmir. So therefore he says, Trey Zimni, Sulachazl and Suve. Why? She's not marriageable any longer. Very often, Tani goes and tells us something in passing. That that he it sets the case that it's speaking divi divorced and widowed rather than two cases twice divorced. That something repeats itself twice, that's a Hazoka already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's what we hold. That a woman's married twice, she doesn't get married. I mean, la locha, she gets married a third time. It's a valid marriage, and we don't force the man to do But he's playing with fire. The husband, the third husband, he's taking his life in, in, in his hands. Right? Because she's a katlonis. Yes, yeah, so that, that's a machlokas. That's a question in Yavomis. Is it mayon or it's mazel? You know, she's just bad luck. Or well, there's something in the chemistry of the woman that caused this. Uh, the worst is what's the difference? Let's say he fell off a ladder fell to his death. It's unrelated to the chemistry, right? So you can't attribute it to the chemistry. But if you died of, a, of an illness or a heart attack, you know, it was the chemistry. No, it's the chemistry, of course. I mean, he had, because he had relations with her. Mayan means by having a relationship that, that, co that caused him to, to die. If it's an accident, if it's an accident, it's an accident. It's unrelated. But if it's, it's mazel, She's bad luck. What did he fall off the roof? <laughs> She's bad luck. Right, right, right. Right. I mean, they, he, she married him. He was, he, was, he was only his 109th birthday. And he chokes on the birthday cake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you say it's bad luck. <laughs> Evidently, yeah. He lived to 109. All of a sudden, now he chokes on the birthday cake. <laughs> he forgot to take the candle off. Okay. Exactly. Didn't see it. Rabbi Yudom HaRishon HaShalav says, e even though at Nesuin the daughter leaves the domain of the father, but the first time he marries her fully, he gets the ksuba of that first marriage. So you have to understand why. Tanakam says no. She gets him because she's out of his domain. Because when do you collect the ksuba? 
after marriage, right? Death or divorce. She's, but the Rabbi Yudah says, no, for my time, the Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi Yosda Amitavai, ho, mishas ersin zochabo. Ho'av. Now, when a woman's in Arusa, let's say she would be widowed or divorced at that time, she get a ksuba. So therefore, the ksuba really has relevance to the father. Right? Now she gets fully married. So now that, that, that she's widowed or divorced. So who did it, initially, who did the ksuba, who was it bound to? The father. The father. So the rebuke says, so therefore, the first time, right? So, but let's say she's fully married afterwards. Now she's married again. The second marriage has no relevance to the father anymore. Because she left the domain after the first marriage. Okay? Mosev Rovo Bar Yehudo. Mosev Rovo Rovo. Rabbi Yehuda Amar Rishon Shalav Umod Rabbi Yehuda B'Ma'aris is Bito. Oh. Kshi Ketano. But it says, we learned, Rabbi Yehuda says, Rishon Shalav Umod Rabbi Yehuda B'Ma'aris is Bito. He marries off his daughter, just Kedushin. Kshi Ketano. Ubogro. Here. And then she became a Bogeris. Vakach Noso. Shein lo vi Rishuz Bo. Valdik. Here. So in that case, we're asking a question. Mosev Rav, he's from a Bryce. Rav Yudah says, the fur father fully marries her off. Moda Rishona. Mo Rav Yudah, but Maris is beat, okshi ketano, ubogro, vakar no, so she'en lo vi rishuspo. The father has no, no claim to the ksuba. No claim to the ksuba of the first marriage. You know what happened? He marries her as a minor. Now she becomes fully mature. Now, to go to Chup, that's our decision. Correct? Now she becomes widowed or divorced after she's fully married. It says she gets the ksuba, not the father. But if you follow the rationale that you just said, now what, 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 was, the, what was the obligation of the ksuba? After the erson. So the father already has a claim to it. So why now that she's a bulgaris, why does she take it? it already, the father ready to claim to it. After the erson. Amai hochen leima ho mishas erson zochaboav. So we said el yidmar hochi yidmar. Rabbi Rav Yostam Ritavai Ho Ubrushuso Nichtovin. Since it was written, the Ksub was written when she was in his domain, right? Umigvo Meim is Gavio, right? Wait, wait a second, I understand. But when do you collect the Ksub? Right? One second. Ho Ubrushuso Nichtovin. Umigvo Meim is Wait. Wait. Samar says, Umigvo Meim is Gavio. Omer Admasna Mono Masayim. Min Ersin, for Tosefis Min Anasuin. Hear this? No, he's going to explain why. The Mono Masayim you collect from Ersin. The Tosefis, any addition, what does a husband give? A man go, go, gives the base, then he gives extra. What does he give extra? Because they're, they're married. Right? If you're only betrothed, that's only a holding pattern. That's in the middle. The, 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 the relationship is what is advancing. So therefore, there's a base ksuba, which is 100 or 200, right, at the time of the Kedushin. Now, why should he give more? Because they're going to be, they're going to be living as man and wife. So he gives more. So the Tosefis is when? When does the obligation of Tosefis come about? That's at, that's at the Nesuin. Ravasim echodzev echodzev in Nesuin. No, both. That even, right, both. That the 100 and the 200 comes when you're fully married. Until then, it's, it's nothing. Umiyom ravkuna. Let's say she, she produced two documents. One ksuba said 200, one ksuba said 300. She wants to collect the ksuba of 200 when she collected from what? From the fir first date. We're saying like this. No, 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 no. The first is mom means from Kedushin. She produced two. Once it's two, once it's three. So she collects the full two from the time of Kedushin and the 300 after Chuppah. That means she's collecting 500. But what we, we just said is saying, we should say the 300 is comprised of 200 and 100. So she should collect only one Ksuba. Right? The first Ksuba was written when? By, by the, by the Erison. So then we say, it depends, if she's a widow, or a, a bu'ula, or a, or a b'sula, 100 or 200. Now, comes to the chuppah, he writes ksuba for 300. <coughs> so what, 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 what's the 300? Does, does the 300 mean 
two plus one. So if it's two plus one, then the first, you, you don't give anything on the first, right? Or we say, no, the three is Tosephus, is all added, in addition to the two. So it says over here, we're saying, Bosa Ligvos Mosayim, Govim Isman Rishon, Sholosh Meos, Govim Isman Cheni, Vemisa Tivi Mosayim Isman Rishon. She should collect a hundred from the first time, from Kedushin. Umeo Isman Cheni. Ultamech Tigvi Chomish Meos, Kulam. You should collect all five hundred. Mosayim Isman Rishon. Plasm Isman Cheni. El Chomish Meos, my time will go. You wanted to collect five hundred. Came with the cost of law, civisivo civis law, class mayo, a mosaim. Since it doesn't say that what? I'm adding 300 to the what? To the 200. So he's not coming to add, but rather he's saying the first one's negated, and the three is comprised of both, of the two plus the one. One second. How does he explain the word civisi? Because of civisivo civis laws. I desire, I want. So, Ratsisi, I want. Hochanami, Hainu Taimo, Logavio, with low cost of low Cephas, Loch Mono. Yeah, yeah. With Logavio, with low cost of Cephas, Loch Mo, Mayo Amosayim, Juliachle, Lishibuda Kamo. He wrote another date. Right. When she took the second document. She took the second document. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't write, I'm adding 100 to 100. But it comes out a big difference. The first ksuba, that means there's a lien, right? He has properties, there's a lien. So by taking the second ksuba, and it didn't say, I'm adding, right? So that means the second ksuba is comprised of what? Of the two plus one. Not the whole three is, a, is, is an addition to the first. So what does that mean? So if it's an addition, you're agreeing that the second should be two plus one. So what happened to the first document? No, no, no. The first, that means it's canceled. It's canceled, not subsumed. That's what, it's canceled. So if it's canceled, there's no shibot. The, the lien is from what time? When does the lien start? From the debt. So if she waives the first debt by accepting the second suba, that means, that means the lien is, is canceled. Right? Hainu time mit lo gavyo, mit lo kosev lo sifas loch, meam amasayim. Achuli achlite le shibut akama. Omamar. We learned before in the Braiso, Rabbi E. Bos Vahai Gavio, E. Boy Vahai Gavio. It says she could collect with either one. She could collect with the first or the second. Maybe because, maybe, no, maybe there's no property with the second. What happens if he sold off the property? No, it's, it's, it's linked. He could have sold it off. Let's see, he sold the property when he wrote the second document. So there's no, there's no land to, to, to lean the property to. The, the, the super two. Let, let's say I, own, I, I borrow money. I have, I have assets, fixed assets. Now I sell off the properties. My credit go after those fixed as assets. Let's say I sold off my fixed assets and I borrow, right? And I have no fixed assets anymore. So what's the credit going after? He can only go after me. And if I don't have to give him, he's, a, he's, he's, he's left, he's in the cold. And I don't pay the debt, correct? So via, let's say the first super was 200, but there were assets. Now he writes a soup of 300, which is 2 plus 1. No, so, uh, no, wait, 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 no, no. So let's say, and she collects with the first one. Why would she prefer to take the 200 if she has 300? What happens if, let's say he doesn't have any, any, any money? And the only thing he has is the, is the property that's leaned. And he has no, when he wrote the second suba, he had no property. No, it depends what she wants. No, it depends what she wants to collect with. It says, E boy gav you by, e boy gav you by, whichever one she wants to collect with. But if she collects with the second one, then the first one's canceled. So you ask me, logically, why should she want to collect with the second one, with the first one, if she has the second one? So I'm, 
because she has a lien on the first one. Let's say there's no property. Let's say the man is, 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 is bankrupt. Right? So I have a document of three. Where am I going to collect it from? Yeah. Lame a plea with Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman, Shnei Shtaros Hayotzim B'Zeach Hazeh. Bita L'Hashen Yisarishin. Rav Nachman says you have two documents saying the same thing, and the two viable documents. They're not forged. We say the second document cancels the first document. Lav Mid Me'ado Omer Rav Popo Mod Rav Nachman Di Yosef Lo Diklo Litosefes. Diklo Litosefes Kasve. If this is as much as a tree added to the second document, the second document doesn't cancel the first document. We say the second document is because what was added. Let's say the first document says, I'm selling a piece of property. The land, the house. But on property, there was a well and there were trees. He writes another second document. He says, I'm selling a property, the house, the well, and the trees, which he didn't say the well and trees in the first document. The second document doesn't cancel the first document. Because he wrote the second document not to, to, to cancel the first well, he could add the, the additional parts, well, what's, what's located on that property, which is the well and the trees, right? The Osef of Dikla Tosevis Ksiva by Hochanami. Ho Osef Lo. Midi, he added because first it was 200, now he's adding 300. Guf Om Rav Nach, which takes Shrasi Yotzim Buzach Azeb, Beetle Shinni Sarishon, Om Rav Pop Mod Rav Nach, Hait Ido Osef of Dikla Tosevis, Kasve, Mazes Pshito. Rishim b'mechor, v'sheni b'matono. No, no, because he didn't write this. He said earlier, because he would have written, I'm adding a hundred. So that means only, only oh, he would say, Rakosala, Osifis, Lo, Mea, and Messiah. He didn't write that. So therefore, the 300 meant, it meant 200 and 100. Here, Kemi, he's selling the same property. So, and then he says, and the well and the trees, well and the trees. So it's clear. So, that, so he's writing a new document for, for, for the, what he's adding. So Mara says, Pshita, Pshita, Rishim, Mecha, Visheni, Bimatono. If the first thing was sold, right? The first document, Pshita, Rishim Bimach Vishenib Bimatono, Liapas Kohu, the cause of law. Rishim Dina the Bar Metro. Yeah, there's a law if I'm your neighbor and you have a field on the other, you have to, uh, uh, a piece of pr a house, uh, a, a field being abutted by two neighbors to the right and to the left. And now the one who owns the property wants to sell it to, to a third party. He's not allowed to sell to a third party. That because these people are the neighbors, they have first rights of refusal of, on that property. Because they're neighbors. Because man says, you know, when I plow my field or when I want to look at my assets, I prefer, prefer they should be in the same location. What about if the person is not selling to a third party, he wants to gift it to a third party? Could, could the neighbors say, won't you sell it to us? They can't say, you should have gifted it to us. I'm not just giving you the gift. I'm giving the gift to a third party. Right? They can't, ca can't say that. But let's say, only if he sells it. So let's say he gifts it to a third party. They said, but we would have paid for it. She said, I'm not interested in selling it. I want to give it as a gift. Then that supersedes Bar Metzra. The neighbors have no claim. They have no claim. So we're saying the same thing. Pshita, Rishim the Mecha. The first document says, I'm selling property. Ruvin, I'm selling to Shimon. The second document says, I'm gifting the property with the well and the trees. Right? So he says, Pshita Rishim Mimach Sheni Matona Liapas Kochu the cause of law. Why do you write the second document? I'm gifting Mishum Dinah the Bar Metzro. That you have no claim. It's a gift. I'm gifting it. One second. No, 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 no,
if it's a gift language, but we know factually he only gifted the trees. He didn't gift the, the property, right? So Rashi says, same, same property. Same, doc, second document is the same property plus. But the first prop, the first, but the first document, so he says, Inami lo even though, right? Lo bita la sarishon, elod lo leisib ne metro le rure ele, the kaimalon, ma tono lesbe mishum bar metro. Koshkim rishim ma tono vsheni be mech, da minim mishum dinir balchov, who the cost of law. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's ten, but factually, if he bought the property, then he writes, the second, second document says he gifted everything. So he gifted everything. Why, why isn't it? But he read it, it's clear from the first document he sold it. You know what I mean? He sold it. So why shouldn't neighbors be able to come and say, but you sold it, you should have sold it to us. Factually, he didn't. It's, it's only, uh, it, 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 it's, a, to co it's a cover-up, right? The second document is a cover-up. So that his neighbors shouldn't bother him. He says, I gifted it, but I know we see from the first document, you sold it, you received money for it. If you received money, you should have come to us, we would have paid for it. We have first rights of refusal, you didn't offer it to us. Has he explained it? Yossi, what does he say? Second, one second. I mean, it's it seemingly saying something. He did the wrong thing. We're saying if he wrote two documents, the occupier should conceal the first document. Because he doesn't co conceal the first document, he's, uh, he's going to have a problem. What do you mean, but he's doing something which is dishonest. He's doing the wrong thing. If he gave him two documents, and when the neighbors come and say, how did you get it? Present the second document. He shouldn't know about the first document. What, what kind of advice is this? Factually, he bought it. But you wrote the second document, so you shouldn't have a headache with the neighbors. What did he say in the footnote? But at this point, I'm not, not for. No, that, that's coming up later right now. We're saying like this. It says, no, he wrote the second document to, to empower the occupant. You understand that if it should be taken from him, he has he has he has a, a guarantee he'll be able to collect. If I give you a gift now, my creditor comes takes the, the gift away from you. Do you have a claim to me? You have no claim to me. But what about if I write the documents if you bought it for me? So now, if uh, if my creditor comes to take it away from you, then you can come to me with a claim, because the document said I paid for it. So the second document, which is which which it says I paid, empowers gives greater power to the person who has the, who received the gift that he could go back and collect from the from the gifter even even though he bought it even though he paid for it I understand but he paid for it factually paid for it so if he paid for it it's, you're playing a game over here 
So how do, how do you advise them this way? You advise, advise the man to do something illegal. I know, that's my difficult. You say, put away the first document, just show the second, that won't bother you. But factually, you, you, did the, you both did the wrong thing. You sh it should have been offered to the neighbors. See, the second one is, is good. If I first give it as a gift, then I give him another document as if I sold it to you. So there, who's the one who takes the hit? The, the, the seller, the, the gifter. Because there, right? Now, let's say the creditor of the gifter would take the property from him. So, it's a loss. But now that you have documents document that you paid for it, now you can come back and collect from the gifter because he gave you a document that you paid for it. Right? Because you, now you're, you're indebted to, to, to replace the property that was taken. He says, only if they're both person received two documents which are identically the same. Yeah, when you, the second document negates the first one. That means the, the, the one, no, it comes out tremendous. I, I give you a document which, which is an earlier date. Now you take a second date, star from me. It's identical information. With a later date, why did you take the second document? They're both sale documents. So evidently, you're admitting that that you agreed to take the second document, you're agreeing to the first, to the one who's giving it, that there was a problem with the first document, that it was a forgery. Or it was it was defective document. Otherwise, why would you accept the document exactly with the same date? If it's a matona, it doesn't negate the first because it's in my best interest to take matona. Correct? Because if I have a problem with my neighbors, I just present the second document. But if they're both identical documents, the only difference is the date. Why should I take a document with a later date rather than an earlier date? Evidently, the, the accepting of document is an admission. That there's a problem with the first document. Otherwise, what do you need? What do you take the second document for? Right? And the same thing with two gift documents. Why take the second document? You have the first document. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a whole different concept. Taking the second document means I'm willing to waive the debt, the lien of the first document. It's not that he's saying there's something wrong with the first document. He's waiving, meaning the person who receives the second document. As I said, let's say I buy a piece of property. Norman, I, I always buy a property with a guarantee. What's the guarantee? That if, if, if the, your credit should take from me, I go back and collect from yours. So that means, so when are your properties lean to that guarantee? From the first, the date on the first document. Now, let's say I, I take a second document with identical information, but a, a later date. So why should I accept the second document? So he says, Rafam's is Ravacha says, when I take second, I'm agreeable to waive the lien of the for first document. The guarantee of the first document, the lien is an earlier lien. So if I'm willing, if I take the second, and there's no basis to say it's a forgery, why should I take the second? I mean, the man has asked me to waive, to release his properties from the earlier lien. You following? And he, is, and he takes it. So what is the take second document? He's, he's agreeable to relinquish his claim to the, to the properties of the earlier date. No, 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 no. There are two, two opinions. Why would a man take a second document with identical information and the only difference is the dates? Is it because he's acknowledging that the first document was a forgery? That's one reason. Or the reason is no. What the, the seller is asking, that since the property was sold with a guarantee, he wants you to release his properties from the earlier guarantee. And it should be a later dated guarantee. I'll give you an example. You want to get take a loan from the bank. They want there should be no liens on the property. Then they'll take it as collateral. Then he liens. They said we're not giving you a loan. A man goes and he already he sold the property with a, with, with a guarantee. That guarantee causes that his property is a lien. That if anything should happen to the property he sold, his property is a lien. Banks, you know something? Is there may be a lien on this property because if one of your creditors collect from him. Uh, this property is going to be lien because then you're going to have to replace the property. So by asking him to take the second document, what is he doing? He's releasing the, the, the guarantee, that earlier date guarantee. 
right? See, Howard knows this. He's an expert in mortgages recently. Okay. Okay. My be now. You can be now. O rue sadi. O lushlumi pered litasko. Right? Is he invalidating the document? Or to pay, pay real ul tasko? Yeah. No, what, what's, what's difficult is, just because I'm accepting the document, how do I disqualify the witnesses? I'm going to say, Hodos, I'm, I'm making an admission the document is possible. It's one thing. But could, could I disqualify the witnesses? I mean, the witnesses, I'm saying the witnesses were, were righteous psulim. Achsumim barishin levrafim psulim. No, I think, no, 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 no. I think it has to do with this. Let's say he does such a thing. And now he wants to use those witnesses under his daughter's chuppah two weeks later. He can't use them for his personal usage. Or he wants to use these witnesses to sign on another document. He can't use those witnesses. Because by you accepting the second witness, you acknowledged that the first witnesses are puzzle, are not valid. So if that's the case, how could you have them sign on another document in the future? That's exactly what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Only Binyan's there. I'm not believing. So that means, what is Binyan's there? They cannot sign on your document. For you, they cannot sign. No, but otherwise. So what is Binyan's there? No, Binyan's there means. My, my admission that it's, that it's false. Rashi says, the Edom of Sumim. Right? What, I, I compare his judgment on the witness? Of course you're not believed. But it's no worse than than Shav Nashchatichid Yisur. If I say a piece of meat which you have witness saying is kosher, I say it's not kosher. You're not permitted to eat the meat. So even though the witnesses in reality are kosher, if I say they're not kosher for me, so that means you can't accept that those witnesses cannot sign on your behalf. Yeah, but Rashi, I'm going Rashi, Rashi, Rashi says they said that they ate him up sulim. A Rui could say it was a forgery. Forgery means that the witness is never signed. So it doesn't, doesn't say a word about the witnesses. Right? No, he says, Tema Gadol, Rashi. Tema Gadol, not Tema. Ma Shepir Shukun just lives on the Edim. Dein Yochel lives on the Edim in Yitzer. So uh, the way I'm learning, it's not a question. It's Shavna Shchati Chedisura. I mean, they can't, on your behalf, these witnesses can never sign, because your admission locks you into this position. The near of the No, no, no. No, Rashi says, Zeh. Binyin Zeh. In Zeh means for his personal, in, in the context of what he's talking about. For you, they can't sign on your behalf. That's why I understand it. Now, that doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. Then they're not really pursuing him. In this context. The first shot he's saying like, like, like I'm saying in Rashi. The first shot he says like I'm saying in Rashi. He says, Nero Lurid, him yesh lezeh makabal matono, shum shtar aches sheedim elu chasumim bo, Yer Marin Lishtora Hoel Bumode Shem Psulim. Since he admitted that possibly if this man has they, these same witnesses on any other document, he, those documents are not valid. Because for him, he said these witnesses are not kosher witnesses. Inami Lishtul Chasimos and Komar. Name is Yufei Zayif. It means only it's a forgery. He's not Larue. He's only invalidating the star, not the witnesses. Yeah. No, he's saying two shot, two shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. 